my colleagues and I came about this project. It was actually with a PhD student who was, who was here at Carlson. Her name is Jean. And we were talking about it, and I was just saying, there's just no way that this self-affirmation concept can be all good. That just doesn't strike me as true. Nothing is all good or bad. And so we looked at the literature, and what you see is that when people are self-affirmed, they really make big promises, and they make tiny baby steps towards changing their behavior, but big behavioral changes are never seen unless it seems to be in context in which the behavior is easy to, to do. Kind of the big hallmark studies are when people are trying to quit smoking um, or they're trying to quit drinking alcohol so much. What you see is they have strong behavioral intentions and then the, the follow-ups don't show much evidence. And so we came to the hypothesis that maybe what happens is when you get self-affirmed, you do believe the threat and you do want to do something about it, but then you bump up against all these obstacles and drawbacks. And then, well, that's the question is what happens then? And so rather than just positing that, that, that self-affirmed people and non-affirmed people would just look like mush at that point, the same people, we said maybe self-affirmed people take a step back and withdraw effort. We had our subjects come into the laboratory, and they first did a self-affirmation exercise, or they did not. And then we gave them either an easy or a challenging task. And they, both tasks involved <laughs> moving pieces of rice with chopsticks, individual pieces of rice with chopsticks, in the easy condition, we take two paper plates and we give them chopsticks and pieces of rice to move from one plate to another. When we say, hey, just give it a try, not really a big deal. And in the challenging condition, we place the plates farther apart and we give them um, a time pressure task, so it's under in 90 seconds, and we give them um, a goal to reach. It's, they should they should move 20 pieces of rice. Our subjects in the difficult condition are trying and failing and trying and failing, and our subjects in the easy condition are trying and like not having a ton of success, but it's also not really feeling that hard. And then we want to measure a bunch of things. So one thing we do is we have them do the task again, and then we have them do the task again. And we measure how hard do they try, meaning you know how many attempts do they make and how many pieces of rice do they actually move. Then we ask them how motivated were you to do well on that task, and so they give us their psychological feelings about that. And then lastly, we ask them if they wanted to have another practice run with something we call the chopstick helper, which is what you give to little kids in the, in the restaurants to learn to use chopsticks. So it's chopsticks that are sort of held together by a banded device. And across the board with all those different measures, what we find is that when people are self-affirmed and they receive the very difficult task, at first, they're motivated to try, and then once they continue to be um, f coming up against failures, they are demotivated in terms of their performance, so they don't do as well. They say that they are not that motivated, and furthermore, they definitely don't want to try anymore with a practice task. So that was, I th we thought, very good evidence for this idea that self-affirmation can be good at going up against small challenges or initial parts of challenges. It doesn't always do so well as people continue to come up against failure.